Hi friends, today we are going to understand the concepts of async, await and a new method introduced by Microsoft. Configure await in the .NET framework and .NET Core. Okay, yeah. So the first step in order to demonstrate this particular usage of keywords is we need to create a small UI application that I have created. A WPF application which contains a button. When you click on that button, some content is updated on the label. Pretty straightforward and trivial. Okay. So what are we doing here? So when we click on the submit button, we are doing a curl asynchronously or getting a string content from a server asynchronously, and we are trying to assign it to the label control of the WPF. <coughs> Let's see what happens now. So the moment I run this application, okay, it's building, build completed, and that's our application. So when I click on submit, some content should be updated on this label, okay. So let me click on submit, boom, gone, nothing is happening here. Can you see guys? Not even maximize, close, nothing is happening. Why? If you provide a keen observation on the code, first thing, in the submit click event handler, okay, what are we doing? We are actually invoking do curl async and what do curl async is doing? Do curl async is actually using the HTTP client object to make an HTTP call asynchronously to get a string content from a local server. Okay, so what happened over here is when we performed do go async from the UI thread, the UI thread invoked this asynchronous operation do go async. Now the UI thread is waiting for this do go async to complete. If we go to the do go async, the do curl async performs this asynchronous get string operation on a separate thread. Okay. Now, the moment UI thread invokes do curl async, the execution starts on a separate thread. Okay. Now, when the different thread comes over here, okay, after doing the do curl async, it, it requires the UI thread to update the label content. So basically, both the threads are waiting on each other. UI thread is waiting for the do curl async to complete, whereas the background thread is waiting for UI thread to update the label content. So these will continue to wait on each other, and that's why we get this particular scenario where nothing will happen when I click on the submit button. That's it, gone. The UI is completely unresponsive. So how to get rid of this kind of situations? .NET has provided two important keywords related to the asynchronous program. The first one comes as the async. The second comes as the await. That's it guys. This is what we have to do here. Okay. And one more little change. So, what are we saying here? The submit click method is an asynchronous operation. Okay. So, when it triggers an asynchronous operation, it must wait for that operation to complete in order to get the results. Okay. So, these are the changes we have to do in order to get rid of the deadlock situations. So, this simple change will work out for us now. Now, let's see what happens when I run the application. My label should get updated with some string content. Okay. Now, I click on Submit. That's pretty good. Today's weather condition is mostly sunny. So, 
Asynchronous programming nowadays can easily be achieved using this async and await operations provided by the c -sharp. Guys, in earliest days of programming where we didn't have async and await, you will have remember, we used to create a new task or new thread inside the submit click event handler, okay? And once that thread completes successfully, we used to make use of the window objects dispatcher object in order to send this UI update operation to the UI thread okay that was the legacy code we used to use in order to achieve updating a UI contents using the UI thread by dispatching a post request to a dispatcher but now onwards that is not required simply make use of the async and await keyword and that's it we will be able to achieve the expected results from our legacy implementations okay so what is this configure await let me explain what configure await configure await is a new method introduced by Microsoft in order to configure your awaiters especially this block okay let me explain in a bit well look at this particular example there is no async keyword there is no await keyword and we are making an asynchronous call and look at this evil code straight away we are calling dot result of the returned task guys the practical word is far far away from the ideal world where we say about the theories in practical scenarios even if we don't want to do this kind of thing sometimes we were forced to do, do this kind of implementation. Now just see what will happen when I run code with this. Well, click on submit, gone. Can you see this? Once again, we enter the deadlock scenario. So what are we doing here? Okay. on click of submit button we came to this particular statement do curl async and straight away we are expecting a result from the asynchronous operation again resulting in a deadlock situation guys most of the UI implementations will go in this way there is no guarantee that people will follow the asynchronous programming standards they may go with this is a synchronous way of programming where they want results in a synchronous way. So the libraries you design or you develop, they should be in such a way that even if a synchronous way call happens from a UI application, your library code should not block the UI components. Okay. So what's the best practice? The best practice, as I had already explained, the configure await method. I am not going to do anything. Simply, I will add a call to configure a bit and I will pass a value of false. That's it, guys. Now, let's run the application. Click on submit. That's it. Today's weather condition is mostly sunny. The result is not updated. So, what did this configure await do? You can see the documentation of configure await. Configures an awaiter used to await this task. Basically, we are configuring this awaiter to await on this task. Okay? And the most important parameter, this false, the Boolean value, what it says, continue on captured context. Can you see this, guys? So, Basically, this boolean value tells you that whether you want to continue on the thread which has initiated this asynchronous call or not. So, if you pass a value of true, it will actually continue, continue or perform this asynchronous operation on the thread which has invoked this asynchronous operation. If you provide a value of false, it will simply use the background thread it will get the result and it will terminate. So what happened over here is that the moment I made this particular call guys, a background thread had been used, okay? 
and the background thread used our HTTP client to get the string asynchronously by configuring the awaiter to false. That means run on background thread. Okay, and then it returned the result, and that result got updated to the UI thread. So basically, what happened over here is when the submit click event handler was executed, we were in the main thread or the UI thread, you can say. We were in the UI thread, UI thread in the board this asynchronous operation on the background thread background thread got the results okay it made the http call got the results and then returned the result to the main thread and main thread once again continue or the ui thread once again continue to update the result okay so as we ran we didn't get the deadlock situation So let's see the debug traces we have written, what they will print, what thread IDs they will print when we will use the configure await of false values guys. Okay, let's run the application and see it. Okay, started. So let me open my deep output prompt, output windows open, so clear the values, so we click on submit. With configure uh, with configure await of false parameters, you see. Before curl, we were in thread one, that is our UI thread. We are in thread one, okay. Even before making the curl, still we are in thread one, okay. But after making the curl, we have came to the thread thirteen, okay. After executing the get string async call, we were in thread thirteen. And again, once we return from this do curl async, again we entered the thread one and we updated our UI component. Okay. Well, uh, one more bad practice of writing async await and configure await implementation is look at this particular piece of code, guys. First thing, the Submit click is itself the asynchronous method and we are doing the await on that asynchronous call, okay? And the most important thing over here is the configure await being used inside the UI thread, okay? So basically when you click on the submit click, okay, we are coming to the submit click event handler, we are doing a do call async method call and immediately we are calling configure await of false. What is the consequence of this guys? This configure await when put inside the do curl async get string async, okay? That is useful to avoid the deadlock situation for us, okay? As explained in the previous demo. But if instead of putting the configure await in your library code, if you straight away put into the, the client side implementation, especially in the UI button click or submit click implementation, let's see what will happen, guys. Okay. Now, configure await of false means we are saying that okay, we want our awaiter to continue with the background thread and don't wait for the UI thread to update the UI contents. Okay, so basically we are saying that just continue on whatever thread is available. So in this case, it is a background thread. So if I run the application, let's see what will happen. Click on submit. Boom, this time it's exception. The calling thread cannot access this object because a different thread owns it. If you provide a keen observation on this statement, it's pretty much clear. Okay, the calling thread, which is a background thread, they cannot access this object because a different thread or the UI thread owns it. Who is the owner of this UI components? The UI thread creates all this UI components. So when we apply this configure await of false straight away inside the submit click event handler on an asynchronous operation guys we are basically telling our runtime that continue on the background thread to update an ui component 
But as per the WPF implementation or the architecture, what WPF says is that the thread which creates a UI component is the only thread which updates the UI components. Very, very strict and very clear. So always avoid using configure await in this kind of fashion. Okay, so you will straight away result in getting an invalid operation exception. Okay, that's cool. So let's correct this implementation now. Now, instead of passing a value of false, let's pass a value of true. Okay, even in this kind of scenarios. Ideally guys, I won't refer this kind of approaches, especially when you are writing your library code. This piece of code, configure await, okay, should go inside your libraries, okay, because Ducal async is my library and I don't have any Ducal, oh, sorry, I don't have any configure await implementation or method call inside this particular code. That's why what I'm doing is I'm putting straight away configure await of true this time. Okay, when I passed false, you saw what happened. Okay, a background thread cannot update a UI thread exception occur. That's an invalid operation exception. Now, if I pass a value of true, that means I'm telling our runtime that use the thread which we use to invoke this asynchronous operation, okay, the UI thread to update the UI component of my UI. So if I run this application, click on submit button, I should not get an exception. Cool, I got the response. So that's configure await is all about okay so there are uh, two thumb rules guys i would like to tell you when to use this configure await of true and configure await of false okay if if you are making some blocking operations or some blocking calls from a ui thread and you want that blocking background operations result needs to be updated on the UI then straight away go with a configure await of true okay so in this scenario by passing a value of true we were able to assign the result to the UI component now this is not the ideal scenario in most of the cases okay if you are writing a library the way I have done here a small trivial library which says do call this what is the best practice? Always put dot configure await of false inside the library. Okay. So two rules. As I said, if you are making use of configure await, if you want to, if you want, if you don't want to block your UI component or UI, okay, while making asynchronous operations, please pass a value of true to the configure await. Okay. And if you are writing some libraries. If you are writing some libraries which are being used by some UI components, then ensure that you put dot configure await of false inside them. Okay, that's it. So whenever uh, asynchronous operation which is performed on a background thread, okay, will be executed on the background thread, and as we have mentioned, the configure await of false it will complete the background operation in the thread itself and it will return and it will terminate the thread so once the call comes here it will continue with the thread which has initiated this asynchronous operation okay guys so that's it for today hope you people enjoyed this session thank you